Backed into a truck. Dang, bro. <laughs> drove off. <laughs> drove off. Hit it twice and drove off. <laughs> I didn't drive off. I parked and then come in. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. My bad. My bad. I got that. <laughs> uh, I got hit twice then. Park twice. Spot. Yeah. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, we love and honor you. We thank you for this opportunity to just explore um, the correlation between everyday news and what we see going on in the world and what we see in the bible father we <coughs> father we don't want to be deceived in the last days so we study uh, the events and everything going on so we just pray god that um it not be uh, by man's wisdom or any intellectual ideas father but it be solely by your spirit that the uh, scriptures are revealed in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Well, somebody get Matthew 24, 4 through 8. Right, go ahead. Let's do Mark 13, 5 through 8. You might say amen when you got it. Mark 13. Amen. I got it. Come on. Malik was first. Go ahead, sir. Read. Make sure you loud so the camera can hear you. I know you are soft folk. Jesus said to them, Watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name, claiming I am he, and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the place. These are the beginnings of birth pains. Um, <clears throat> you know, the beginning of the birth pains was triggered in 1948. Uh, Israel is the only nation to have ever been completely. You know, they wasn't wiped out as a people, but they was wiped out as a nation that come back and was restored as a nation. Uh, so that's uh, sort of sets in place the prophetic timeline. You got two thoughts here. You got a, a Zionist thought, which we believe that God isn't through with Israel. Now, there's a re replacement theology that says that the church replaced Israel and that there's no nothing else for Israel to do at the end of time. The only issue, the biggest issue I have with that, and I hadn't really studied it, was Jesus is coming back to the Mount of Olives. So, I mean... If it's if that land isn't significant, why would he come back to the Mount of Olives? And when have we ever known God to break a covenant? You know, so uh, that and they got their argument on their side. You know, but I do still believe that God's not through with Israel. And I think what we're seeing in Israel is a a big part. The problem with Israel is pride, and it was the problem with the Pharisees. It's a problem now. Is they're so swelled up with pride. I mean, God chose them to bring the Messiah. They just didn't understand that that was the the totality or the most important thing that they were supposed to do is usher in the Messiah. Uh, and, but then they rejected the Messiah. Um, like they rejected God over and over again. Like we reject God over and over again. Uh, the events unfolding in Israel are a timetable for the unfolding of God's prophetic plans. So, <clears throat> you see a scripture in Daniel that says knowledge will be increased and people will be running to and fro. I want you to really consider uh, technology in the last 150 years. Some people argue whether the moon landing happened or not. I don't know. Some of the film and stuff is real suspect. I don't know. I know NASA uh, come out with this blue beam project uh, that, that has been exposed. And I believe all this stuff plays into the last days. Uh, I believe there really is a an Illuminati um, elite uh, type group that is a shadow government that is controlled by hybrid Nephilim that are already on the land. Already in the land. Uh, I've been... It's been popping up on my YouTube, and I've been watching a lot of it, but it's a lot of the stuff I already confirmed. You know, when I was in prison, I started a book called Prophecy or Fiction, and I retold the, um, the creation story uh, as if it was told by the Antichrist, but the Antichrist posing as Anunnaki or sky people or aliens, and then 
you know, retold you know, everything. Eventually, I guess I'll get back to work on that. But I do believe that, that, that it really is. I believe that that is significant. I believe that, uh, 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 you know, I said this back in 2020, COVID, uh, Israel being surrounded by all these things are important, but the most vital aspect of us avoiding the great delusion that's coming, the great falling away, is when the Pentagon said, hey, there really are UAFs or UAPs or whatever, UFOs in our skies that, are, that defy our understanding of physics. So you do a 90 degree turn at 6,000 6, miles an hour, or you hit the water at 12,000 miles an hour, and you don't explode. Well, how that's physically impossible in the natural realm. But if I am seeing into the spiritual realm, then the natural physics don't apply. So if you go back and look at some of these videos of these UFOs and stuff, I mean, they're, and some of them are hoax. Uh, but when you got eyewitness uh, and you got video, and then you got multiple radar detecting something, and it's the U.S. Air Force or the U.S. Navy, you can say, hey, this something's going on. So that's the most prominent event, uh, but I do believe that, you know, they're, they're not. Uh, could uh, the Nephilim, could these people in the last days use technology? Absolutely. I mean, uh, uh, so you go back to knowledge being increased. Well, you know, so you say the, we, we really did, let's just say we had rockets in 1969. We had them way before then. Uh, but in 1903, we take a 12-second flight. 66 years later, we got, we're flying to the moon. Think about the significance, 66 years compared to the 6,000 years you know, what was the biggest invention? Gunpowder and the printing press prior to that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, and now we literally have like a hundred times the computing power of the first, uh, of, 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 the, of the craft that went to the moon. A hundred, maybe even a million times. I, I was looking at this thing where they had a five terabyte hair drive and it, and it weighed a thousand pounds. And then I got a one terabyte hard drive mm -hmm on a keychain, you know, so you look at just increase, increase, increase. Um, so we see that, uh, you know, when we look at all these things together, we can see a correlation of these birth pains happening. Um, the, re the return of Israel was a milestone for God's prophetic time clock, and Israel herself is reference point for understanding the redemptive history of the past and present. The beginning of the birth pains is characterized by 12 worldwide sign trends, and that's what we're going to talk about today, events that will increase in frequency and intensity through the second and third prophetic timeline, time frames until the second coming of Christ. Uh, we'll probably talk about the rapture eventually and look at all sides of the rapture. Um, some people believe that the second coming of the rapture is one, one thing, uh, some people believe we avoid all of the great tribulation. Uh, some people believe we're mid-trio. I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you. I have no idea. No, I, mean, I, I can argue it. I've heard the arguments from every point. But when Jesus come the first time, it said that he clouded, that he hid his plan to the uh, principalities of this world because if they had known it, they wouldn't have killed him. They really thought they were killing Jesus. And that's the reason when, when I would begin to torment the demons, we remind them of how they felt when that stone rolled away. You know, remind them how they felt when Jesus went to hell and took their keys. Man. We remind them, you know, so uh, um, we, they don't like that. It's like, oh, no, I can't believe it. He got up. Yeah. So let me ask you this, man. Yeah. I know it's a verse in Revelations that say, when Jesus come back, they that pierced him will see that uh, see him when he comes back. 
And do you think it's it's not talking about the Roman soldiers? Do you think it's talking about the principalities when they when it could be the principalities? But I think it's everybody that has ridiculed and tormented Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, it, it's real easy to say God first because God could be anything. You throw Jesus out there, yeah. and <laughs> yeah. people go nuts. No. They hate. In the beginning Jesus. for me, that was that was hard. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it, it, you, you, you acknowledge a higher being. Eddie's conversion, Madison's husband, yeah. is so cool. I mean, because he was honest and, and he was apologetic because other people, for his honesty, condemned him. Yep. I said, listen, dude, I mean, I struggle with some of this stuff. I mean, you know, the, the, the idea that you got to come to God with complete and perfect faith is just stupid. What, what, how does the grain of mustard seed apply? It applies to all aspects of God. I don't need but a little bit of faith and to, to be combined with my proclamation for the grace of God to come in and the old me die and the new me come alive. So, um, you know, and he just had real questions. And, and we talked back and forth. We started meeting on Tuesday nights. And then, you know, it, and eventually he just... Kept feeling the love first, not, man, you're so crazy. How can you how can you doubt God? How can you not doubt some of the things in the Bible? That's true. I mean, because you got you know, our whole life this uh, contrary to the Bible. It's not without all doubt. It, it our if we had perfect faith, our faith would not need to grow, right? So uh, if we had perfect faith, there would be no necessity to pray and to fast and to crucify ourselves and to read the Word. We wouldn't even need the Bible if we had perfect faith right off the bat. So and that's what it's about. Uh, but the analogy of uh, birth pains, um, I know uh, Mark is a dad. Who, who else in here is a dad that's been around when their babies were born? Anybody? So... You know, it's a, it's a pretty interesting process. Man. Yeah, I remember, like, when, when he was born, you know, I cut the bill for court. I didn't watch him nothing, you know, but I was right there. But I'll never forget when they, like, they wrapped him in the blanket and they laid him on the thing to weigh him. I had my phone out, and I was just recording him. And I was, like, face-to-face -face with him, and he opened his eyes. And I was, like, I was the first thing he seen. And you're like, whoa, I had something to do with that. <laughs> yeah. You know, birth is a miracle. And, uh... Um, Mankind is, well, the, the world suffered three falls. At the end of every fall, God said, be fruitful and multiply. That is the, uh, a, the satanic agenda of the LBGTQ, blah, 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 whatever, how many ever, because they can't reproduce. And, and recently I found, because, and it all started with feminism. I mean, you know, I'm a real big, let's get the structure right. God, man, wife, family. You know, it, the, the man has to step up and take the role in the home. Now, a lot of times the women are more spiritual, and, but a lot of times the women struggle with the Jezebel spirit. A lot of times the women have never repented uh, from their uh, innate characteristics that come by way of the curse to dominate a man. So you see a flip-flop, you know, and, and there's going to be times when it does this because we're imperfect. But what needs to happen, and the thing that I love about this church is the men in the altar. The men, I mean, they're there. They're praying. If you'll look, women are in the altar, but probably uh, two out of three people that hit that altar are men. That is unusual. That it, so I've had multiple people come in here and say, man, I've never seen that many. Number one, I've never seen this many men in church, and I've never seen this many men in the altar. You know, and, and the biggest reason is because I let you be men. I mean, come on, man. We, we got issues. I let you be real. You ain't got to hide all that stuff. You ain't got to put your church face on. You're struggling. It's okay to struggle. But with the birth pains, you see when they get pregnant, you know, they get the little baby bump, and then they begin to grow, and that thing's literally growing inside of them, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. The bigger they get, the more uncomfortable they get. Well, what we're seeing right now is we're seeing the, the birth of the end of time. We're getting closer and closer. Uh, and so we're, we're looking at things. We're looking at, I mean, I mean, who would have thought uh, even five years ago we would be where we're at right now? 
Mm -mm. No. Even five years ago. I mean, man, litter boxes in public school bathrooms. I mean, come on, man. I mean, this stuff is wild. I mean, drag queen story hour. It's one of the things you don't know you're in it until you actually see it before your eyes. Like, whoa! Yeah. It like just sort of slip up on you. You hear about it. It's like years ago, back in the 90s, when I, we were, some of us were kids, like, yeah, you would hear about things like that, but it wasn't so prominent and in your face. You know the 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 whole debacle in Colorado with the dude didn't want to bait the cake. I used to be like, shoot, I don't care, bake them a hundred cakes, whatever. <laughs> and I like, you know, if they want to get married, I used to be like that. I did, did yeah, yeah, wow. because I'd rationalized it in my mind. Oh yeah. But now that I, you know, begin to see how the the little compromises, mm -hmm. the little foxes. You know, I heard somebody preaching a message on the fox. Was that? Yeah, my real Man, real that was strong. He's like, you know, foxes can't, um, they hunt alone, but they live together. But if they can't find anything to eat, they'll go eat the other foxes. I mean, I, I had no idea. I mean, they'll devour their own babies, you know. Uh, which, they do that. Um, <clears throat> Jesus used the analogy, you know, uh the birth of the new age, which is the millennial kingdom, which is a thousand years. We'll probably talk about that. Uh, so we see 12 worldwide signs that will increase in frequency and intensity, culminating to the second coming of Jesus. The Apostle Paul spoke uh, of creation as a groaning before the established rule and reign. Somebody get Romans 8, 21 and 22. <clears throat> Uh, 8, 21, 22, go ahead. Uh, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. And we can see that groaning. We can literally see the earth groaning with the hurricanes, the tsunamis, the earthquakes, the famines, the, the driving. I mean, we got floods on one side of the nation and drought on the other side of the nation. I mean, really think about that. We got, I mean, the same nation, we got floods going on over here and droughts over here. And then if you pull up NASA's uh, map of forest fires, it'll blow your mind. I mean, this Canada is on fire. Somebody say hallelujah. California. <laughs> 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 California, Canada, I mean, you know, there's forest fires just out of control right now, you know, so we're seeing the, the in, in, the, and this is a, every issue, every forest fire, every hurricane, every tornado, everything in the natural realm was birthed in the spiritual realm. That's how we had to look at things. It was birthed there. So we see this accumulation where the world's really, really groaning. Uh, somebody get Mark thirteen six. Mark thirteen six. Yeah. Go ahead. Man. For many shall come in my name, saying, "I am Christ," and shall deceive many. And somebody go ahead and get Mark thirteen seven. I read it. Okay. okay. Well, wait until I get that. Uh, so, false Christ and false prophets. Uh, what a lot of people look at with this is they look for somebody to come on the scene and say, "Hey, I'm Jesus Christ." Um, what is what does Christ mean? Anointed one. Uh, anointed, but a, 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 a savior, anointed one. But the biggest thing that it means is deliverer. Mm -hmm. So Moses was a form of Christ. So what we got right now is we got the world is a mess. I mean, when you look at politicians that say that they can save this and do this, they are a type of Messiah. They're a type of Christ. And unfortunately, in America, we have begun to worship our politicians. And, and we can't do that because Satan is the god of this world. The kingdoms of this world are controlled by Satan. <coughs> And let me tell you, 
percent of politicians are absolutely corrupt. And I don't know. There's some good ones out there. Tim Scott is, is humble and, and down the middle. Apparently this new Speaker of the House is evangelical. Uh, but then you also have to go back. It, it's like the, the show, The Chosen. Let me tell you what's going to happen with The Chosen. The Chosen will eventually go into the, uh, propose the idea that there are multiple ways to reconcile with God. Uh, they will. You know why? I know. I don't want you, you know. You know why? Because their relationship with the Mormons. The Sound of Freedom, the guy that made that movie, is a Mormon. Mitt Romney is a Mormon. This is a polytheistic, uh, uh, pagan religion uh, uh, wrapped in uh, thinly wrapped in Christianity and if you'll begin to look at it so you can expect that kind of stuff to happen and I love the chosen man I like it it, it is it really brings the Bible to life but it will lead those that are lukewarm see what's going to happen you're either going to get hot or cold and if you're uh, but the lukewarm those are the ones that will fall victim of the great delusion sent by who who sends the great delusion no God. Oh, no, God sends the great delusion. Yeah, yeah. That is the point where God pukes them out of his mouth. He puked. The process of him throwing them up and rejecting them is him sending the great delusion so that they'll believe a lie. Um, so we see many false Christs in the pop in the uh, in the look at the 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 Zulinski, Zulinski and, and Yugoslavia. That dude is a Nazi, man. I mean, there's so much Nazi ties back to this guy. He said it, it, it ain't a good time for elections. What do you mean it's not a good time for elections? He's a dictator. He's a dictator. Yeah. You know, and we made a deal. We told uh, Russia we would not involve them in NATO. We broke the deal. And Russia said, no. No, 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 no. You're going to withhold your end of the deal. Now, I'm not choosing sides on the conflict. I chose a side a long time ago. Jesus is my king. But we have to understand the and, and what happened? When's the last time anybody heard of a death count in Yugoslavia or in Ukraine? Ukraine? Long. I mean you don't even hear. It's like, you know, <laughs> it, you got so in the Maui fires. I mean how do you melt a car in a grass fire? I mean you go back and look at that two twenty two hundred degrees it takes to melt glass. And you got melted glass 20 foot away from grass in a gravel parking lot. Bomb in, certain bomb. in certain spots. You know, so what's one of the other signs of the false antichrist? Cause fire down from heaven. Could that be by way of a satellite? Absolutely. We're watching them shoot missiles out of the sky with lasers and you know, they developed that system. You know, they, they needed to update the iron, yeah. uh -huh. iron curtain. So uh, Israel had uh, some new technology where they could yep. uh, deter missiles with that little uh, dome. The yeah. iron curtain. Yeah. 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 The, the iron curtain is a, a rocket firing, but each one of those rockets costs fifty thousand dollars. So, but the uh, the cost of these lasers are so much cheaper, and they're so much more effective. I mean, they can shoot drones, rockets, everything. They just got to get them placed, you know. And so when they're they just they're just like. Star Wars, beep, 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 blown them out of the sky. But knowledge will be increased. Uh, so we see the idea uh, uh, of the, the many false Christs and false prophets. A false Christ is anyone that comes on the scene and says they are a deliverer, that they're a Messiah, that, that you know, Trump is a false Christ. He, he, he was a false, did, I mean, and let me tell you, I had huge reservations about Trump. I mean, I'm like, we're going to World War III. This dude is nuts, you know. But he, you know, he did mostly what he said. Do I think he's a good man? Absolutely not. He's a womanizing. Nobody gets that rich without without hurting people, you know. I just don't believe it. I, I believe he's, but I, did he bring a reprieve to the nation? Uh, did he disrupt the plan of the elite? That's the reason they hate him so much. Yeah, you know, he's not one of them. They, they, he's not one of them. You know, I, I know he wish he would have really drained the swamp the first time. You know, uh, uh, I mean, it, 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 and they're not going to let him. I don't care. Listen, let me tell you, they will assassinate him before they let him take office again. 
the, the guy, the two guys that, that make the most sense to me is Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and this uh, um, uh, Hindu dude. I mean, he's blasting them in the debates. I mean, he's like, y'all are crazy. They, they, Trump made a comment the other day that they supposed was, uh, he referred to, uh, I guess, people come across the border as vermin. So they wanted to call Trump racist again. And the dude's like, what are you talking about that? <laughs> I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about wide open borders where we got sleeper cells. You know, when Robert F. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. went down there, he said about a third of the ones coming across were Chinese. <laughs> what? You know? So anyway, so we see all that. So the the, the other thing about uh, an aspect of false uh prophecy that a lot of people don't understand is the news media. I mean, come on, think about it. Yeah. I mean, it, they only let you hear what you want to hear. Uh, so, um, uh, somebody read Mark 13, 7. Uh, uh, okay. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, don't be alarmed. These things must take place. But the end is not yet. That's seven. You want to date too? No, just seven. Overall, there are 32 countries currently in conflict. When I googled it this morning, uh, the, the types are very widely. Um, but you know, when, when you get over into um, uh, in northern or especially in the African continent, I mean, they're really. There's a lot of genocide. I mean, they want to wipe out certain sects of Muslims. They definitely don't want to have anything to do with Christians. And they, it is just, it's awful. Uh, but there's a lot of, and now we got more countries. I mean, you know, we got uh, the, the president of China going to Russia, the president of North Korea going to Russia. Mm. And they're also got Cuba and Russia talking. Yeah, that's 90 miles off our coast. You know, 70 miles from Key West. Did y'all know that? That the Cuba uh, was talking to, to Russia? So we, no. we're, we're seeing... China was built, like, like making, like, their own land in the ocean by dumping, like, debris where it and claiming it as theirs so they could, like, get to, uh... Taiwan? Yeah. 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 yeah they'll, they'll eventually mm -hmm. invade Taiwan. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody read Matthew 24, 7. And we see the wars, we see them escalating, we see Iran getting in, we see Saudi Arabia has got to pick a side eventually, you know. 24 7. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Uh, you got nation against nation, and that means ethnic group against ethnic group. That goes back to the racial divide that, that Satan has tried to bring to this country. Um, you know, and, and it's unfortunate, okay, I can understand a uh, divide in the natural realm. There should be no divide in the spiritual realm. But the one thing that the deliverance ministry does is a common enemy, and when we understand the reality of the common enemy, we're okay, let's put these traditions and these petty differences aside, let's link up, join arms, and go to war against who we're supposed to be war over. Uh, but uh, nation against nation, that word literally is ethnos, I believe, which literally means ethnic group. And we've never seen, um, since the 60s um, and 70s, we've never seen such a racial divide. Uh, the thing that I've noticed a lot about the, the Gen Z is y'all aren't, I mean, you're all wanting unity. You, 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 you don't seem like you're, for mine and uh, for my generation, there was, there was just a lot. I was just fortunate enough to be raised in a home where we were taught to treat every man with respect and to not look at color and to not look at all over blind. I was raised in a, my dad, he was so poor, he considered himself at the bottom of the barrel. So he's like, I'm not going to judge any man except by, you know, my dad was a very, he was a violent man before he, but after he got saved, he was a very humble man. Um, you know, he was vice president of the Iron and Steelworkers Union. This is the testimony of his conversion 
arrested for attempted murder, multiple assaults. The picket lines back in the early 70s, if you ever want to look at them, they were violent. I mean, he, he, uh, he took a lead, uh, took a garden hose and filled the last four to five inches of it with lead. So <clears throat> there's one guy crossing the picket line and he'd drive a moped and Daddy had a 700cc um, Honda. So he and this guy are popping along on a moped and Daddy comes by and swings that thing around and hits him across the chest and knocks him completely off. I mean, he, he had wrist rockets and they would shoot holes through the doors. Had 30 arc sixes and they'd be in the back of the pickup trucks and when they'd see a Bowman truck driving, they'd pull in front of the Bowman truck and, and shoot. In Green Springs one day, they found a Bowman truck about five of them got out of the car with their pistol and pulled the guy out of the Bowman truck and pistol whipped him right in the middle of the intersection. So that was my dad. He was the organizer of that. He was a violent, violent man. Uh, and then after he got saved, he's walking across the loading dock and he's seen three of his buddies talking, old union buddies, and uh, he immediately quit, vice president of the union, uh, and the guy walked up and slapped him as hard as he could. And they asked him, they said, he said, Daddy said, why'd you do that? He said, we just want to see if you're really saved. <laughs> oh, <bro. laughs> so you, you see the conversion. Now, all that's in the unaddicted, by the way. But we see these wars and the, 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 the conflict, um, and then we see the civil disorder. I mean, the racial divide, and we look at the 2020-2021 riots. Um, I do believe, you know, and, and, and um, I was in prison with black guys that got 25 years for weed. Uh, and if you look at the crack laws, I mean, they were really, 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 really unfair. I mean, it was ridiculous uh, that um, I could have a half a gram of powder cocaine and get a misdemeanor of six months probation, and I could have a half a gram of crack cocaine and get 10 years. I mean, it was, now the, the crack epidemic was what, I mean, was intense, and, and there is a difference between powder cocaine and crack, but the idea that I can have the same substance, uh, because it was the, the, the crack made its uh, run in, in L.A. and the black communities, and then you've seen all these guys with these completely unfair sentences. So, uh, um, you know, I, I, I do have an issue with that. Um, is there... Uh, it, you know, I could go on and on about that, but just sitting there talking to these guys, I mean, it's just That's really good. I, I can I say this real quick? Yeah. Definitely now, I'm in the colleges now, and they got these people, and I, they think they're so smart the way they try to teach, you know, about racial equity and stuff like that, but all they're doing is really, and yeah, some of it is true, but they're dividing the people, and they're making like, I don't know, the way they try to make it seem like is that we're justified in what we do and you know it's because of, you know racism and stuff like that and they do have like it's like a subtle truth though but it gives us like i don't know if you're not really spiritual and you really corner you can give you a reason to justify to do the things that you do and it's dividing like they trying to like i don't know it's like a reverse effect because they want to say that they're going for racial equity but all they're doing is just dividing us because when they tell us that you know what, what do they call it Everyone but themselves. Yeah, and they, and they mm -hmm. want to make me feel like you're the reason why I can't do what I'm supposed to do. And so, like, you're the bad person, even though when it comes back to you. So, and they're teaching this in the colleges. And if you say anything, you know, they say you just don't know what you're talking about. So, I got to argue with my teacher, like, almost every day. And, like, everyone's like, what are you arguing about, dude? This is helping you. I'm like, but it's dividing the people, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. They, well, that's I, what they I teach think, me in that woke trend. Yeah, that woke trend. Man. It's all in colleges, man. It's like indoctrinating folks. And you got girls thinking that they just know everything about the black community and stuff like that and what's going on. Like, and they like, they on, never bro, been there. Right? Been the just because you listen to Vanilla so. Ice. Yeah. 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 yeah, I've been to Gay City. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they think they're so smart. That's and it. like, and this is the problem with the black community and, you know, white people, white supremacy, and just, yeah, it's all, just all ignorance, yeah, man. It's all HBCUs. It's becoming. Yeah, and now you got universities protesting Israel after Hamas goes in and chops 50 babies' heads off. Yeah, yeah that was kind of they said head. Israel like, stole the land. Yeah. That, that was the stupidest thing. You got all these girls, like, like pro-Hamas, like, y'all don't get 
exactly what the crap's going on. See, but the, the, you can't expect natural people to understand spiritual truth. No, so so trying to argue with them is just stupid. Yeah. You know, you're just uh, wasting emotional energy. Uh, but you see it, I mean, it, it, and it is, and it's. I'll be talking about it in the morning. It started with Darwin's theory of evolution being accepted in schools, and it was just all downhill from there, man. We're going to be talking about the two streams of the of the real church and the false church in the morning uh, as we continue. Um, um, somebody, get, well, we talked about, uh, somebody get Mark 13, 8. But one of the things I want to say to you about the millennials and Gen Z, the, the more people see us united, especially in those generations, and, and see us locking arms and being friends and, and, and um, standing behind the cross and uplifting Jesus and where we just become invisible. I'm not, I'm not black, I'm not white, I'm not Hispanic. I'm, I'm invisible hidden behind the cross, uplifting Jesus. It's not about me. It's not about building a ministry. It is about building the kingdom of God. And and, 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 and as corrupt as social media can be, it's, in essence, it's neutral. Amen. But it is a great platform for Gen Z and millennials and for anyone to share their testimony. And listen, I'm all about being real and raw. I mean, I'm, there ain't no shame. If you're ashamed of what God has done for you, need to find a secret place and begin to pray. Yeah. You know, if, if you're way out there, you know, I'm real open. When, when I first started telling people that I was, as a man, it's hard to tell people you were molesting. Uh, but I'm like, you know, it, people need to hear it. People need to understand why I did what I did. And, and I, 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 I still had control, but with this y'all's generation, y'all got a great avenue to really reach a lot of people. Uh, and, and, and as y'all begin to share these and make these videos and share them on, you know, pages doing a good job, as y'all begin to do that, you'll begin to see more people your age that are demonized that come for help. You know, I can spout it all day long. I'm a 55-year-old uh, uh, ex-con, redneck looking, which, listen, if you're redneck, I love you. And if the uh, apocalypse happens... I'm, I'm gonna love you even more, <laughs> but uh, um, but I'm not a redneck. <laughs> yeah, I'm not You'll never find me in uh, basketball shorts and in cowboy boots. Matter of fact, uh, the cowboy boots that I have, um, they they've never been rained on. Oh yeah, yeah they're just show boots. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, so uh, uh, somebody read what did I say? Matthew twenty four seven. Yeah, we're at Mark thirteen eight. Mark thirteen eight. Somebody read that. <clears throat> For nations will rise against nations, then kingdoms against kingdoms. There will be, there will be earthquakes in various places. There will also be famines. These things are merely the beginning of birth pains. So right now in America, we throw away seventy percent of our produce. Did y'all know that? You know why we throw it away? Because it ain't pretty. Because it ain't pretty. So what is the issue? Why are people going hungry? Uh, because of conflict, because of embargoes, because of, you know. Uh, but right now, the biggest economic warfare that we got going on is uh, the BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, and China, and now South Africa. Uh, and then in 2024, you got Argentina, Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and United Arab Immigrants uh, will be on here in a, a month or so. So they are going to base their economy back on the gold standard. In other words, if they don't have gold to back it up. The reason we got inflation like we do is because we just keep printing money with nothing to substantiate it. And it's worked so far, but there has to come a time when the economy collapses. I mean, how, you know, a couple of years ago we're paying $7 for a dozen eggs. I mean, think about how asinine that is, um, you know. I sent this out to a few people. They've actually, um, uh, Toyota's got a engine that runs off water. I mean, what is water? Oxygen and hydrogen, right? Oxygen and hydrogen both are flammable. So you just learn how to separate it, they've learned how to separate it, and you got hydrogen engines now. There was a guy that invented that before, and they he came up missing. Crushed it, yeah. They missed it. Yeah. They came up missing on it. Uh, yeah, yeah. They are perpetual 
uh, generators that run on nothing. I mean, I even drew one out one time. It's really not that big of a deal, you know, for a perpetual generator to produce electricity constantly. You know, There's probably a cure for cancer, but they're not yeah, going to give it to because us. Of because the money, of the money, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know what the cure for cancer is? Stop eating sugar. <laughs> yeah, that's the cure for cancer. There was a, I watched a documentary. Uh, There's this like certain group of people that have never had cancer because like they eat like, the seeds of some, I think it's apricots or something like that. It's multiple things. Like, like they eat the whole thing. Like they don't spit the seeds out. Like they eat the seeds or they'll crush them and use them. There's all kind of um, videos and different things, things like that out there. Ginkgo the, the, the thing that, uh, you know, and I'm a big nutritionist, so uh, we were created to process God-created food. How much God-created food do we have anymore? Our, our, we don't even have Jesus wheat anymore. It's all gone. All the wheat we have is genetically modified. That's the reason the gluten, the protein in it is so high. Everybody's gluten intolerant to a certain level. Uh, everybody's lactose tolerant. Then you take this corn that we eat, it's genetically modified. Uh, you take all the oils, when you heat them up, it changes them. Um, you know, and, and there's a reason for every one of the Levitical laws. The um, pork will cause Marilyn's RA to flare up. I mean, it will. She eats too much pork. She, she starts swelling up. Yeah. You know, so gout, yeah. And, uh, uh, but then you take a, I, 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 um, coached a, I think he was in Sweden, um, uh, a doctor in Sweden for by design and fitness industry. He was a doctor of theology and he was like a national overseer for a couple of nations and he had reached out to me for help. And he was a Marine, but he come home, started eating a typical American diet. Ooh, I mean, 5'5", five, five, 375. Oh. <laughs> Woo! I mean, if you kicked him, he'd have just rolled three. Yeah. <laughs> bloop, 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 bloop. But anyway, uh, uh, but he said, when you go over there and get a loaf of bread, I mean, three or four days, it's gone. You go over there and get a chicken, they're like this. You know, and we got these chickens in six weeks. Yeah, you know, I mean, so we, we have, we just ruined our food. So, as we ingest this stuff, we have, you know, about 80% of what's wrong with every American in the world can be defined by consumption and the state of their, their mental status. I mean, their uh, psychosomatic illness is real. I mean, but we see the BRICS nations coming together. So what are they doing? They want to destroy the American dollar. Why? Because they want to destroy America. Uh, why do they want to destroy America? Because America's always backed Israel. Now, I don't really believe Biden's comments of him supporting Israel because I believe that he's part of the side of things that, that, that are anti-God. I mean, when you come in and, and you're like uh, affirming 72 different genders, you know, and opening the border wide open to, to open us up for the one world government, I mean, you can see that he's probably talking one way, but another way, you know, he's just, uh, and, and, and trying to, listen, there's two things that have to happen before this nation can fall. The first two amendments have to be gone. And I love what you said the other day about the eight no amendments. Yeah, yeah that, that was nice. That was, was, <laughs> that was, that was yeah, so yeah, But they got to take our guns, they got to take our rights. Yeah. Religion. <laughs> um, Let me ask you this, Pastor. Yeah. With Biden, do you think, that he's act, you think he's just a figurehead? Because I heard some people saying, "Oh, he's a puppet." Oh, yeah, he's yeah. A he's a puppet. You think Obama is really behind the scenes controlling what's going on? I believe so. Yeah. But this is what the rest of the this is what we know about the Antichrist. He'll have no uh, regard for women. Uh, uh, he'll not honor the gods of his fathers, and then you know the Antichrist doesn't go before the judgment seat. All humans go before the judgment seat, right? So the Antichrist has got to be a Nephilim. See, think about that. So what you're going to see with the Antichrist is literally Satan coming into the natural realm with a woman and producing an offspring of the beast. 
we, we was listening to that on that uh, video, and I'm like, and then it tied back in about how there will be a war between the seeds, between uh, uh, Satan and Jesus. So the, God wasn't racist. God didn't want them... Uh, he wasn't telling them don't mess with the Canaanites because they're less than you. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was telling them because they're infected. They were infected with angelic bloodline. So it was in the days of Noah. It'll be in the end of time. What was happening prior to Noah? You literally had God's two families coexisting on Earth. You had His heavenly family and His oh, earthly God. family, and they began to co-mingle. And God said, "I got to stop this." I've got so he destroyed the, you know, and now I believe we're seeing a return of the Nephilim. I believe that the Antichrist will emphatically be the offspring of Satan and an earthly woman. Well, everything we know has always been a cycle anyway, so that would make perfect sense for it to be another cycle, of the exact same foretelling of the past to come to now. Then it says in the, in in Corinthians somewhere, all these things happen as an example, so you can see what we say history repeats itself. Um, uh, in Christianity, we want seasons, seasons that birth new things. Amen. But in, 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 in the kingdom of darkness, they got cycles. And what we're dealing with is recognizing the kingdom of darkness. Um, I just want to throw this out there. But I feel like, you know, as believers, like the idea of everybody trying to figure out who is Antichrist is another form of deception. Big time. That, 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 Keeping your mind busy. That that yeah. point right there itself is enough to cause division. Somebody's gonna be fighting about who they think is the Antichrist, yeah. and you know, it's kind of like a shell game. Like, where do you think he's gonna pop up at? Who it might be? So on and so forth. Number, number one, we have to look at we're dealing with a spirit, and that spirit was released on Pentecost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we had the Holy Spirit and the spirit of the Antichrist released at the same time, and we're just not gonna know. I, I did find it interesting when they looked at the Hebrew for 666 uh, and how it... Um, um, uh, the Hebrew alphabet lined up with... The Hebrew alphabet for 666 lined up with something uh, for Islam. You know, I do believe that... I do believe the seed of Satan is the Catholic Church. I do believe the Catholics already embraced Islam. And we're, that's some of the stuff we're going to be talking about in the morning. You know... Um, you know, and you can just look at the Vatican. It's evil, bro. Yeah. I mean, you look at some of the imagery in there. I mean, it's just the the, the, the serpent room. You got a big snake. You know, it, 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 you you look at some of the imagery wow. in the Vatican. It'll blow your mind. It's demonic, period. Oh. And then, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. With the little boys. He calls it. himself God. He says, "Man, now, I'm God on earth." Several of the popes have said that. You don't understand. I'm God on earth. Listen to what I say. Um, eat this and you will be like God. Same deception, just cycles, right? So the famines, um, you know, um, we see famines. It don't make sense because we got all this food, but because the nations, because the kingdoms are, because the governments are at war, we can't get the food to where it needs to be. And there's uh, not just like famine here on earth, but there's like a famine of like people here in the word of God. Like, not knowing, like, yeah, and you know, that's a, a, a prophecy, too. I wish I would have thought of that. That's a good word. There's a prophecy that says that there will be a famine in the last days of the Word of God. Did you know that? I heard it. Yeah, there is a prophecy. I'll, I'll, I'll look it up and put it in the men's chat. But it, it, there is. There, because the, the, the Laodicean church, the false church, don't preach the whole gospel. Uh, they preach... The first part of Mark 6, uh, baptize, you know, uh, and make disciples, but they don't preach casting out demons, healing the sick, and, and spiritual protection, and heavenly protection. And then, and, you know, what's the end result? you got two generations of people that are seeking to connect with the supernatural through a Ouija board instead of the Holy Spirit. So, Pastor Nash, it is? Yeah. If you said they preach the first half of the gospel, but they don't preach the second half of the gospel, how much of that is Jesus tolerating because of ignorance, or is Jesus just saying that, no, they're just completely false? You know, the one folks that will not be deceived in the last days are the Reformed folks. Uh, the Body Bachmans, the Justin Peters, the uh, uh, John MacArthur's. Now, they say we're demonic for praying in tongues. 
But they emphatically say Jesus is the Christ over and over and over again. Eventually what will happen is they will repent for their proclamation that the gifts of the Holy Spirit no longer exist and they'll come in. Uh, or they won't. And if they don't, they'll go the other way. But the, 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 uh, the Laodicean string is a, is a social Jesus, is a progressive Jesus, is a Jesus that um, isn't really spiritual, it's about feeding the poor. And feeding the poor is important. But the, the proclamation of the gospel that Jesus is the way uh, it is what we're missing. In John, 1 John, the fourth chapter, it says you can determine the spirit of the Antichrist when they don't tell the truth about Jesus. What is the truth about Jesus? He is the way. He came in the flesh. He came in the flesh. He was God. He, he died for our sins. He existed before the foundation of the world. But when they begin to say that Jesus was a martyr or, or, or a prophet, or that they're, and to say that there's multiple ways to reconcile with God is a slap in the face of Jesus because he died. He, he died. Um, so earthquakes, we don't have to read. 12,385 earthquakes so far in 2023. Uh, troubles and commotions. Um, uh, we'll, we'll just run through these. The U.S. surpassed 600 mass shootings so far uh, in this, I think this was... Uh, November the 14th, 600 mass shootings, 600. Now this ties back into Revelations 18.23 for the, the nations, the ethnic groups, ethnos of the world will be deceived by the merchants of uh, pharmacia. So pharmacia is what? Sorcery, where we get our word pharmacy. So what we got, in, 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 and I wanted to know, and I, this was real talk with Malik and I, I'm like, why is it only white, young white men walking in and blasting 